purpose of this demonstration is to visually show the impact that the theory of constraints and the principles of optimized flow can do for your business. I call it the oiled wheels approach to organizational improvement. A 1.5 litre bottle is filled with water and in order to empty the bottle, all the water has to flow through this bottleneck. The demonstration covers three scenarios using three identical bottles but differences in the dynamics of the flow. In each demonstration, please observe carefully what happens. Firstly, what happens in the bottleneck itself, the dynamics of the flow through the bottleneck, and secondly, what are the dynamics in the rest of the system that is inside the bottle. Let's look at the three different scenarios. In the first demonstration, the bottle is overturned to allow the water to run out by itself. The clock starts when the bottle is overturned and stops when the bottle is empty. What do you expect to happen? It takes about 18 to 20 seconds for the water to run out at a rate of about 4.5 liters per minute. Let's look at what happened. Firstly, in the bottleneck. The water started to flow, but it creates a vacuum inside the bottle. This vacuum caused the flow to stop momentarily and allow a bubble of air into the bottle. The air relieved the vacuum inside and caused an equivalent amount of water to flow through the bottleneck. This process repeated itself until the bottle was empty. It is a continuous repetition of stop-start flow. Secondly, inside the system, the result of the stop-start flow is turmoil inside the system. There's a lot of activity, but it does not increase the rate of flow. There are lots of unproductive conflicts, many internal processes that do not add value, and a system that becomes a captive of its own internal processes. It is a demonstration of the world of local optima. In the second demonstration, the bottle is overturned and then given a few good turns to generate a swirling motion. This generates a vortex that allows air to flow into the bottle while the water runs out through a swirling spout. What do you expect to happen? Will there be an improvement? Observe closely what happens in the bottleneck as well as what happens inside the bottle. It takes about 11 to 13 seconds for the water to run out at a rate of about 7.5 liters per minute. This is nearly double the flow rate of the first demonstration. What happened this time? Firstly, in the bottleneck. It took a second or two to get the water to generate the vortex. The vortex allowed the air in while the water ran out in a circling spout. The water and the air each had its own path and this created continuous uninterrupted flow through the bottleneck. Secondly, inside the system, all the water particles were aligned in the same direction and created aligned flow. Everything was subordinated to the generation of directional flow. This is a good demonstration of the theory of constraints in a physical flow environment. The third demonstration. A straw is now added to channel the airflow. The bottle is overturned and air is blown through the straw to clear all the water from the straw. The pressure from the blowing also starts the process of flow. Take note that the straw has reduced the capacity of the bottleneck. What do you expect to happen? The clock starts when the air is blown through the straw. It takes about 4 to 5 seconds for the water to run out at a rate of 18 liters per minute. This is about double the flow rate of the second demonstration and about four times the rate of the first demonstration. What happened this time? Firstly, in the bottleneck, the flow was super fast. It was stable, without interruption, and more than four times the rate of the first demonstration. Secondly, inside the system. The inside was characterized by calmness, stability, and absence of turmoil and pressure. Is it possible to have superflow within a spirit and culture of calmness? Yes, it is done by doing the right things right. 
The demonstration with the three bottles illustrates the following lessons. Firstly, in the three demonstrations, the bottleneck remained the same. It illustrates that the theory of constraints is not a process of de-bottlenecking the operation. It is a process of increasing the flow through the bottleneck. Secondly, if you follow the right approach, you can eventually get both superflow and a spirit of calmness simultaneously. In order to do this, you need to address the physical flow and the people aspects of the business simultaneously. Applying the principles of the theory of constraints and optimized flow can significantly improve your business.